Hello and welcome to the show. For today's Hot Wheels showdown, we have got something rather large and rather heavy. This, the Bentley Super Sports. It's a quite frankly crazy car. They sound incredible. It's one of the Goodwood Festival of Speed this year. It makes a incredible. It's not the sort of noise you expect to come out from a Bentley, I will be honest. And I'm going to give it a try around the Hot Wheels circuit. As I said, there are a big a big downside. There is plenty of power to begin with in this car, but it weighs 5,000 pounds, which is quite a lot around a course that, let's face it, has been very demanding in terms of handling. Now, the rules for the series, the car must be running on the race compound tyre. It will still fit within S1 class doing that. My bigger concern is if I just chuck tyre widths on, I need to be able to get... Oh, it's already got full-on race brakes, okay. I need to be able to get this... I need to be able to get weight reduction to stand any chance at all. As you can see, that takes up most of the PI. We will do it. Uh, I would quite like... I would quite like a roll cage, I'm going to be honest. In a car, while it's designed to be sporty, it is a little bit of extra weight, but uh, it's never going to, it's not going to have the chassis rigidity of, for example, an MX-5. So we're going to go for that. Uh, I could probably do it with anti-roll bars as well, couldn't I? Again, considering the car that we are driving, I'm going to want... Want the anti roll bars. Now, actually putting the power down, probably not going to be too much of an issue in this car. I wouldn't have expected. Uh, we do really want a Forza rear wing. I don't really care too much about the drop-in top speed. Not so relevant around this circuit. I kind of want front aero, though, to try and get rid of... Well, there's going to be a lot of understeer in this vehicle. It's always likely to be... See, this is the problem. Tire widths. We can get 285s at the front. We might be able to get the rear tires on. Yeah, we can get the rear tires on without it uh, making any difference to the PI. It'll make the car a little bit heavier, but we'll give it more grip. I know it's all-wheel drive and so on, but even all-wheel drive cars can oversteer, especially when you've got as much power and torque as this. So we will do that. Unfortunately, the downside of working with a car like this, not a huge amount of PI to play with. Uh, ooh... I should probably go for at least a stage gearbox so we can change it if needed. I'd expect the Bentley to have quite long gear ratios. That being said, um, yeah, it's nice to have the option. Now, something like exhaust would be nice to try and get some weight out, but I don't think we're going to. I think it's going to be stuck with the standard engine in terms of power. We've got the tyres we need. We are all-wheel drive. Decent-sized tyres as well. Full aero. Fairly light, I say fairly light, as light as I can realistically make the car, unless we can sneak in, oh, we can sneak in a flywheel. Yeah, it was shaved off a thousand pounds in terms of weight, it is still on the heavy side of things. But it is something very different, and it should be quite interesting to see where this is uh, going to fall among our leaderboard. Well, the great Bentley boat is ready for its five laps around the skyscraper takeoff circuit, where I am going to be, well, trying to be to Sierra Cosworth. 133.6 is the fastest time, in all honesty. Uh, we're not likely to be seeing the Bentley challenging, challenging that. Just looking at the stats alone, I would be amazed if it could even vaguely get near the top of the table. Its closest, I guess, closest competitor, certainly in terms of car type, is the Rolls Royce Wraith, the 136.8. Eight, which is not a massively quick time. I would expect Bentley perhaps to be a little bit quicker than the Wraith. It's got, I think, perhaps a little bit less power. Uh, however, all-wheel drive should help it get out of these corners very, very well indeed. There is a lot of grip. Where is all that grip coming from? That's flat out through turn three. Oh, not quite going to be flat out through turn uh, turn four there. There have been a lot of sports cars that have struggled trying to take that sort of speed through the third quarter, and I was expecting a lot of understeer, and there simply isn't. This is a lot better handling car than I was expecting. The Super Sport is has absurd levels of grip that the car is generating. This is where we are likely to struggle here. Yeah, and indeed, it's only 156 miles an hour. So the problem with the Bentley is that uh, we've got, well, twice the weight of some cars and about the same power. So we have half the power-to-weight ratio of uh, vehicles. In fact, we have less than half power-to-weight ratio. For example, the Fairlady Z had 1,000 horsepower and was 2,000 pounds. This is 700 horsepower at uh, 4,000. 
You can see the issue that Bentley might have. It also did a huge jump. That's not quite so good. That's not what you want your car to be doing. Bloody hell. Um, yeah, we bunny hopped to Bentley, as you do. 205 miles an hour on the run into the final quarter. It was a poor run across the boost pads, primarily because we were in the air a lot, but at 37.8 is not too shabby or a lap time. Not for an opening lap. Admittedly, yes, the car is all-wheel drive, so its launch is going to be better than a real drive car, which means that the difference between a standing start and a flying start lap is slightly slightly less with a car such as this. That is so much speed through turn one, two, and three. It can get on the power so nice and early, as you'd imagine an all-wheel drive car could, out of that second quarter, and then it's flat out all the way through turn three. I've not quite got the grip to do it through turn four. That's 132 miles an hour. That's not far off the Mercedes 190E, and this is in a humongous heavyweight Bentley. I was expecting to be dealing with a mile of understeer, but uh, that is not the case at all. I am very, very impressed with the chassis of this car. Sure, you know, it's got upgrades. It's got race tyres, relatively big race tyres on the car. But so is everything else that has got in this series. And for this vehicle to be going as fast and as well as it is through the corners is just outstanding. The lack of acceleration, I think, is going to be what does the car in at the end of the day. It's just not got the uh, straight line speed to compete with some of the other vehicles. And there's something, oh dear, something not good there. It really doesn't like the landing. Oh, we're not going quick enough. No. <laughs> Bentley. It's gone. It's It's gone swimming. Um... Yeah, it does not like. I wonder if that is something to do with the amount of weight in this car. It really struggles. There's, there is so much weight to try and pull up the hill. It's really struggling to get around the uh, around the loop there. So, uh, I don't think we can try and play it. Like we can't play it risky. I don't think we actually want to be aiming for anything other than dead center when it comes to that jump just because if this car wiggles around a little bit on landing and you're right on the outside you bounce off the wall and that makes everything 10 times worse at least if you land in the middle you stand a chance of uh, regaining some sort of control i turned in too late through there we're going to run wide again much like i said with the daytona though there is so much grip i have so much confidence in this car that uh, you can get away with running the wrong side of the lamppost you can really position the vehicle where you want it and that's a trait you expect from an MX-5, not from a £4,000 Bentley. It's, it's utterly incredible. I, I'm in a little bit of shock at how good this car is through the quarters. I know the lap time, I suspect the lap time, okay, we haven't had a clean lap time yet, but I suspect the lap time, we might be able to get it into the 35s at a push with a really, really perfect lap, especially if we can get a, we can get a perfect run towards the loop, that would be helpful. But uh, I doubt we're going to see much more than that. But the manner in which this car is gaining speed is what is so impressive. Its acceleration is always going to struggle with the aforementioned power-to-weight ratio issues. However, it is making up so much time through the corners. It is remarkable. Okay, now try and fly the car straight here. Try and get a landing. Oh, it's so awkward there. We've not had a car bounce around that much ever. We've had the, uh, the odd car go soaring off into the abyss, but we haven't had a car bounce in the manner that the Bentley is down there. 206 miles an hour before we get on to the brakes around this final corner. We go to 35.9 from the Super Sports. Okay, I think we might get into the 35. I wonder if we can go any quicker. Uh, it wasn't a perfect lap, although that's a fairly shonky second corner from me. So... There might be a little bit of time uh, on the table somewhere to be able to find with this with this vehicle. If we can get a good run, we can get a perfect launch off of the boost pads towards the loop. I think there is definitely time to be found there. That's an area that the car is likely to struggle. Again, it's, it's dragging all the weight up the hill, and the Bentley just doesn't have the power to uh, compensate for that. I, I say the pads compensate for that with about 700 horsepower car here, but this is comparing to the vehicles that have got already so far in this series. So, yeah, it just can't accelerate around the loop well enough. I've kind of fluffed up a couple more corners. It isn't a great lap, this particular one. I don't, Unless I've suddenly found some magical line somewhere. It doesn't, 
I'm not satisfied with this lap, certainly. I feel like there have been uh, a few too uh, a few too many. I mean, try and lower gears, seeing if it can help us get out of some of these corners a little bit better. I'm not sure it's really working earlier. I may, maybe overall it'll be a little bit neater. We'll, we'll see when the lap time comes in, really, won't we? Uh, now, can we get a nice landing? It just can't land well there. It just is refusing to land well at, uh, at that particular section. It just wants to bounce back. I didn't chase down soon enough either as we go around the uh, around the loop. Okay, into the final corner we go. We'll kind of abandon that as a uh, another practice. I guess terrible at 36 something. Okay, we're, this is the one. This is the one that uh, I say that matters. That uh, if we're going to go any faster, we're going to have to find the time now. Almost running up towards the uh, wall got away with it uh you want to leave it in fourth around there yeah gets much drive off the top we are so so close to that kind of ghost time much closer than we've been in a lot of sports cars it's gonna lose the lap time as we go around this part of the course i know it's gonna lose the lap time uh, around here compared to uh, other vehicles but that uh, first sector is so fast in the bentley it might be one of the fastest cars i i think it'd probably be top five top six in terms of speed through that uh, through that first sector it's really really impressive much better run though through all of these uh, opening corners only 155 miles an hour though into the crossover point at 20 25 miles an hour down on the ferrari and that's not a very very short run yeah okay the ferrari is crazy fast but it's 20 miles an hour down on a lot of cars going into uh, into that section and that's a big chunk of uh, chunk of speed to be losing out on just highlights the cars real lack of any uh, acceleration here we go across the boost pads for the final time that's not good bentley get back down on the ground oh we did but huge wiggle from the car we are i think in a bit of bother here uh, <laughs> damn it it was going really well for the early part of the lap but i'm not sure we've got very much to yeah it sucked out, sucked out all of the speed and we just couldn't get any acceleration around the loop. It's... 35.9 ah, is going to have to be it. There are big problems. There are huge problems with the jump. Problems we've never seen from a car before in this series. It just cannot land it smoothly. Now, I don't know whether that is the huge weight of this vehicle. I say the huge weight. I mean, the Rolls Royce can't have been that much lighter, if any, any lighter than this. The, but uh, certainly big problems with that landing there we didn't have one time where we landed really cleanly we wheelied we bounced around i mean we twisted massively that time cost us 10 12 miles an hour for the run up towards the loop and that's that's gonna hurt so that's gonna hurt your lap time on a section that the car struggles at and the overall lack of acceleration is always going to do the car in but it is incredible through the corners for such a vehicle. The lap time is going to put the vehicle into a 20th place. It will beat the Super Impressor, beat the Twin Mill, beats Jaguar XES, the Challenger Hellcat. Will lose out, though, to the Lotus 311, the Pumabile, Alfa Romeo 4C, AMC Gremlin, and so on. A, yes, yeah, staggeringly good car to drive when it comes to the corners. Not what I was expecting in any way, shape or form. Let down by, well, the acceleration that was always likely to be a problem, but the biggest issue of all being that uh, that jump, the way the car twists around uncontrollably on, on landing. Never, never a good thing. Too much unpredictability with that. Elsewhere, though, uh, yeah, surprisingly, in fact, incredibly surprising, capable vehicle. That, though, is uh, going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.